Starting a project this big can be a little overwhelming, so I'm going to go over a few tips and tricks that are going to help you out. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and as you can see the Project 442 has been basically stripped all the way back to the firewall. We've got the core support, the front end, the fenders, the drivetrain, the firewall, everything has been taken off from this part forward for the most part and this weekend we're going to work on getting the glass out and the doors off. All part of the process and listen this can be something that is severely overwhelming. I get that. I've done something similar to this before so I have that confidence in me to be able to do this again but if you are attacking this for your first time it can really pile up quick so I'm going to give you some of the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that's helped me out to keep my sanity keep a project like this uh, on the rails and maybe help you get through something like this because if I can do it you can do it and that's kind of the whole purpose of this channel is to show you that average people in their garage can do almost anything that they want to do if they're willing to put in the time, learn what they need to do, and, and just work. You, you know, it is work. But that all being said, this took me a day. I, from pretty much everything was on here, everything was still in here, to getting the whole front end stripped off, getting the drivetrain out one day. Now, honestly, it's going to take you longer to put this thing back together, but it still takes a while to take it apart if you do it appropriately. And I'm going to talk about some of the things that I do along the process that's going to help you out. First things first, you got to have some space to work in. Now, not all of you are going to have the ability to have a second part of the garage that you can just take a vehicle out of, clear up, and then have all of this working space. You can do this without this but i'm going to tell you you're going to be fighting an uphill battle because even at this point in time right now where i've got all this stuff spread out uh, i've got more outside thing like the old uh fenders the old hood the exhaust things like that that don't need to be inside most of that stuff's not going back on the car it'll be replaced this is stuff that will probably go back on the car so space is very important now keep in mind if you're doing a project like this and you get started and then you stall you're taking up a lot of space so the other side of that is, is I also go out and generally get a storage building and it can be uh, a little bit expensive based on where you live. But if you have cheap storage prices, man, it makes life nice. I've got a stack of four wheels and tires over here that aren't going to go on the car for months. I'm going to go ahead and get those out of the garage, clear up the space. The old motor, same ordeal. That 350 doesn't need to be in here during this process. Whatever I'm not going to use, but I might need down the road, I can move it down to storage. Or if I'm going to use it and I know that I'm not going to use it for weeks or months, let's get it out of here. Let's keep things somewhat sane. Granted, this is not the cleanest working environment. The other thing I like are foldable tables, these plastic tables. I've got three of them set up right now that you get from Home Depot, Lowe's, places like that. They are invaluable for how I work to be able to spread out tools in this case, parts over here, whatever you need. This is a workstation with computers. All that kind of stuff so I can look things up as I'm going. I can go through catalogs, etc. Having good workspaces works. I've got another one over there even. Those are holding parts for the Typhoon. I need to actually get those down to storage because we're not going to be doing anything on the Typhoon while we're working on the 442. One of the next most important things is going to be Ziploc bags. You got to have Ziploc bags for labeling things. And in fact, if you go on Amazon, I'll try to remember to put a link down below. You can get a four pack of Ziploc bags that comes with the snack size, which is the real small ones, the uh, quart, the sandwich, and the gallons. And it's like 20 bucks. You're getting, I don't know, 400 Ziploc bags. Along with Ziploc bags, you're going to want Sharpies. And I've got Sharpies pretty much on every table if I walk around. I can find a Sharpie. I want to always have a Sharpie nearby. And so as I go through, and if I step back here and show you, so I go through and I pull parts off, I put everything in its own bag, label it, brake booster bolts, brake pedal pin, stuff like that. These are all Ziploc bags from the front end. Now, it serves two purposes. One of them is, is it keeps things organized for you. The other one is, is I go to put the car back together and I'm looking for the parts or say I find, oh, these bolts, 
They don't look good. They're not going to be the ones that I want to put back on there. I can go ahead and jump online and between places like OPGI or eBay, find a kit that replaces all the hardware in here. Then I can come in here and document that I ordered this bag of hardware, this replacement hardware, put the date on there. And then I can set these aside somewhere else in case I need to resort back to these. But I know that I'm going to have new hardware going on. And so that will be one of the processes that I go through here soon and look at like all my front bumper bolts, they need to be replaced. They look like trash. So once I get these ordered, I'll label it, set them aside. And that way I have spares if need be. But Ziploc bags, super important. Another thing is a whiteboard. This is something that's great to take quick notes on, jot down to-do lists, things like that. You notice I don't have anything on here. We're in the process of tearing the car down right now. I'm not really worried about what needs to go back into it whenever we, uh, to get it back up and running. But whenever I go through different phases of doing brakes, suspensions, engine, things like that, I'll go ahead and do punch lists on here. That way I can mark them off, keep track of what I need to do, other things like that. Just make sure you have a dry erase marker. In fact, I need to get some more dry erase markers and don't put your dry erase markers near your Sharpies. Trust me. And kind of last but not least, one of the things that I like to do is break things down into bite-sized chunks. I approach tuning much the same way, where I like to focus in on specific tasks at a time, perfect those before moving on to the next one. In this case, whenever it came to working on our 442, I knew that I wanted to start from the front and move back. And on that side of it, I wanted to start from the top and move down. And so literally, as I move through this car, that's why the steering column's still in here, I am working front to back, top to down, to take out sections at a time. Our next sections really are gonna be taking the A-arms off, the brakes, et cetera, get all the way down to the bare frames and maybe the steering box. I'll probably leave the rack and, and box on there. But then we'll move into, as I said, getting the glass out because we'll be working from the top down towards the back, the doors off, and then the interior. And then that's whenever we're down to where I need to be to start prepping interior, doing sheet metal work, et cetera. And so by having kind of that direction that I'm following, instead of jumping around from the front to the back to the inside and things like that, it keeps me focused, keeps me on track. Now, there is a time and place where you will be jumping around. A lot of parts are on back order right now, all across the, you know, the nation, across the world. It just is what it is. So keep that in mind whenever you order stuff. I really like OPGI, Original Parts Group, because they are one of the best at updating your back order statuses on parts whenever you're restoring something like this. So whenever I buy parts from OPGI, I know if it does go on back order, I'm going to get weekly updates telling me, hey, this is the projected or this is what showed up or you know, we still have things to be determined. I've been so frustrated lately dealing with companies that do not respond do not reach out to let you know things are back order. Do not let, you know, just it's customer service goes a long way in this industry, especially whenever you're talking about doing a project like this where you're going to end up spending thousands of dollars over the course of the project. So keep that in mind if you're a vendor out there. Customer service should always come first. One last thing, make sure to kind of segment off the things that you're going to need help with. I was able to get the hood off. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw that it wasn't perfect. I did blow out an overhead light in the process. But I do have some stuff this weekend coming on. I've got some assistance coming over, things like the doors and the glass, which I really don't want to do on my, my own. Get those ready to go. That way, whenever whoever's coming over to help you out, everything's there. You're ready to go. You can knock it out liquidy split. You're not wasting their time. You're not wasting your time. You're maximizing your time. That's really what it comes down to on project cars like this is trying to maximize your time as much as possible. Where people get stuck in the muck and the mire is they try to do too many things at once. They go all over the place. They don't focus on one thing at a time, which can be hard right now with how parts are to find. But not focusing in and getting things accomplished will cause these things to uh, start to slow down, cause you to get into a rut, and then you'll get to that point where you just don't want to work on it anymore. Whereas if you're doing something where you can see progression being made constantly on the car, even in small aspects of it throughout the vehicle, you're going to be a lot more excited to get up there and work on the car, get out there, get your elbows, uh, you know, get down to your elbows, get your hands dirty, all that fun stuff. So keep that in mind whenever you're deciding on what you're going to do next. Well, listen, 
I want to know what some of your guys' tips are because I know there's plenty of you out there that's watching this that's done this kind of work in the past. Make sure to hit up the comments down below and stay posted. We're going to have a lot of cool stuff that we're doing on this in the coming weeks. Now, I am going to be out for a couple weeks. If you haven't noticed, my head is shaved. I'm going in next week for brain surgery. Finally, for the tremors, they're implanting a deep brain stimulation device next week and then two weeks after that, I'll have a controller much like a... Uh, heart uh, drawing a blank. I never draw blanks. I haven't drawn blanks. But the, uh, the heart control thing, it's the same idea. It filters out signals. A lot of you have been following me over the years. You've seen that I have tremors. This is going to help that. And they're talking about a 70 to 90% reduction in tremors. So there's a lot of things about that that excites me because I have struggled over the last few years to do a lot of fine wiring, soldering. I can't TIG weld, things like that. I'm hoping to come out of this on the other side, shaking free, maybe even where I can actually hold a camera and video myself at the same time. Mind blowing, I know. But listen, thanks for everybody for your uh, continued support. I will see you guys very soon. We're going to keep on working on this uh, literally after we get the doors and windshield out, interior. Uh, we're going to start stripping this thing down and getting it ready for paint. We'll reprime it, decide what we're going to do on the color, all that fun stuff. And I'm going to paint this thing in the garage. I've done painting in the garage before. It's been a long time. I'm excited to do a project of this size finally. And originally I was going to do it on the Nova, but I'm just more excited about the 442 right now. So listen, you guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.